The 6 o'clock news starts right now. It happened again. Another train crash along a busy road in Cibolo and Shirts. This is an ongoing issue for drivers and people who live near FM 78. But as our RJ Marquez tells us, a local councilman is hoping to find solutions to the problem before all this gets worse. We've got to do something before someone is killed. Um, that, that is the main concern is I don't want to see anyone um, lose their life at this particular crossing. Cibolo City Councilman Joel Hicks says it's time for more action after another crash along FM 78, this one at Country Lane. He says signage and crossing signals are not stopping large trucks from getting stuck on the tracks. We've got signs up that say no through trucks and uh, our police officers do write citations for trucks cutting through. This crash caused traffic delays for hours and shut down Country Lane. He says closing that crossing is not an option. There's a lot of residents there that would have delayed emergency services if we were to close down that um, particular crossing. And as you can see behind me, the train is now moving along the railroad tracks, but the crossing over here right down the street has been closed for any cars and trucks. Councilman Hicks told us that it would remain that way until crews got all this diesel cleaned up from this early morning crash. It's a recurring problem in the area. Last month, there was a train crash in shirts on FM 78. The signs are up. The truckers need to, to realize that that's not a safe crossing for them. I'm hoping that um, it doesn't come down to the ultimate, which is, is a loss of life. That's one thing that we do not, do not, absolutely do not want. Union Pacific owns the tracks. Hicks says he's reached out to the company for answers, and the city set aside money years ago for an engineering study. Everybody knows that they, they've got the rights. So it's one of those where they need to take the lead, but obviously... The city's willing to st step up and, and, and work with them. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And tonight, the San Antonio Police Department releasing body cam video from two separate shootings in March. They happened just one day apart. And in both cases, the officers shot the suspects. In one of the cases, the suspect died at a hospital. The other man survived. Hear all those shots. The first one happened on March 28th. It started at a car wash on Essex in Hackberry, ended at the suspect's home in the 1300 block of Mesquite. In the video, you see the officer get out of his car at a house. The suspect, Paul Palafox, begins to fire at officers with an AR-15. Police were able to find Palafox with the help of their drone. Later in the video, an officer shoots Palafox across the street, injuring him. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. The second shooting happened the next day on the south side at Arnold Park on Gillette Boulevard. This video shows officers telling the suspect, 26-year-old Raul Arzola, to put down a gun he had in his hand. Police say Arzola pointed that gun at his own head, then turned it toward the two officers. The officer shot Arzola. He then ran from police before they arrested him. He did survive. <clears throat> he is now charged with two counts of aggravated assault on a public servant and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now to an update on the woman and child injured in a shooting at a home on the north side. The mother and her two-year-old daughter are out of the hospital tonight. Mariah Claire and her daughter were released from the hospital yesterday. Claire's 11-month-old daughter was actually killed in that attack. Funeral services for her will be held on May 3rd. Claire's ex-husband, this man, 50-year-old Stephen Claire, arrested for the shooting. He's charged with capital murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. We have learned some new information about a shooting that killed a UIW student earlier this month. Selma police say the suspect who killed 22-year-old Joseph Banales was driving a Nissan 350Z or 370Z. Police say the, co the car was a dark color with an aftermarket loud exhaust, possibly a spoiler. Officers say that Benales was shot in the head while driving on I-35 near the Forum sometime around 11.45 p.m. April 15th. Right now, there's no known motive for the shooting, but police suspect it was road rage. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. This week is National Crime Victims Rights Week. The theme this year is Survivor Voices Elevate, Engage, Affect Change. It's exactly what one local woman is trying to do. Erica Hernandez has her story and how she's helping others who suffered great tragedy, just like she did. A journey with roller coaster emotions. 
Some days are great days, some days are, you know, middle of the road days, and other days are just very difficult. Josefina Cannon still deals with the loss of her son, Sean Cannon. On October 25th, 2013, Sean was headed to a friend's house in the 2500 block of Agonier Avenue when someone in a white SUV pulled up to that location and opened fire. Sean was hit several times and died from his injuries. It doesn't go away just because it's been, you know, five years, eight years, 10 years. While Sean's case remains unsolved, Josefina has since joined advocacy groups and now focuses on helping others who have suffered a loss due to violence. Usually we meet at a little restaurant to have brunch and talk and enjoy each other's company and hold our hold each other's hand and if we need to cry on each other's shoulder but we're here to lend an ear to whoever wants to uh, join us as for josefina even if suspects are caught she says it won't bring her son back it's never a closure it's always something that i carry when i die you know i will be reunited with him and that's what i look forward to there is still a Crime Stoppers reward for any information that can lead to an arrest in Sean's case. If you have a tip, you can call 210-224-STOP. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. A citywide party with a purpose is certainly underway during Fiesta, but it is best to party with plans for a safe ride home. Before you start stacking up those cups at Niosa, make sure you have a designated driver, call an Uber or a Lyft. Or you could also save some money and take advantage of Via's rideshare program. Yeah, pre-plan. All these options better than being stopped by San Antonio police. So far, the police department has arrested less people compared to last year. At least 69 DWI arrests so far. Bear County sheriffs have arrested more people than last year, though. At least eight, w, eight DWI arrests so far. Some people having a good time at La Villita say have fun, but be smart. Always have a designated driver to take you home, uh, get you home safe and just watch over you guys. You know, you don't want nothing crazy to happen when you're having fun. So it's just better to be safe than sorry. All right, don't forget VIA offers park and ride options. It can save you money when purchasing a ride share home. And just a little tip, download your ride share app and put your card information in before drinking. And the Fiesta festivities continue this evening. Garten Fest has officially kicked off. It's a three day event where you can enjoy German culture and delicacies. Yeah, it's located at Beethoven Hall and Garden, or should I say Garten, <laughs> in the King William area. Doors open an, around an hour ago. That's where we find our John Paul Barajas. John Paul, they always know how to have fun at the Beethoven. Absolutely, Steve Myro, this place is packed right now. Behind me, you got the Tubermeisters rocking the stage. That's four guys, all of them with tubas, but they make some amazing music. Ray Fayo is here. He's been swarmed by people trying to take pictures with him. And I know it's hard to see, but over to the left, we have the beer line. And they have 15 different German beers on tap. I don't know what else would get you down here other than that. But if you don't want to drink, they got plenty of food. Come check out Bratwurst Express. They got the brats hot off the grill. There's plenty inside here. The food is amazing. And then over here, you got the kartoffel, not puffer, but poofer, or AKA the potato pancake. There's so much for people to enjoy. Like you said, you don't normally think about German heritage or culture when you think of fiesta, but tell, well, let, me, let me tell you right now, they know how to party. They love to party. I was talking to the honorary president. He said this was uh, an easy way to party because it's halfway to Oktoberfest. That way you don't have to wait a full year to throw another party. Now I have a special guest who just wants to say a quick thing. What do you have to say? Viva Fiesta from Beethoven, next two nights. Awesome stuff. I need to get me some Lederhosen or at least the shirt. That way I'm not as hot. I'm Fiesta ready. I'm not Garden Fest ready. Tune in at 10. I might be in some Lederhosen. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Hopefully they have some sort of floral pattern Lederhosen for that you. That shirt's got to stay. That is that is here to stay. <laughs> Thank you, John Paul. All right. That's not the only Fiesta festivities not. we have going not. on. We have a medal giveaway happening right now. Sarah and Mia. Yeah. yeah, and with a big crowd. Hey, ladies. Hey, hey. hey yes. guys. We have a huge crowd.
JP was saying everybody knows how to party. This crowd right yeah. here knows how to party. We, Viva Fiesta, we just started giving out medals to everyone that came and got their wristband. Sarah, it has been so much fun here it at Bob really Mills. It really has. Bob Mills has been a wonderful host. We're so happy to be in the air conditioning. We have a few KSAT super fans here. First of all, this is Kenny. He loves watching GMSA on the weekends. What do you call us on the weekends? The happy people. The happy people. <laughs> we are. And we have, we have Tracy here. It's Tracy's birthday. Happy birthday, Tracy! We have had such a wonderful time here at Bob Mills. Again, the medals are being handed out right now. So if you missed it, I mean, there's opportunities to see us out and about during Fiesta. I know that Adam Kasky has another medal giveaway coming up here later on this week. But let's just wish everybody back at home a Viva Fiesta! Viva Fiesta! <laughs> a bunch of happy people out there. I know. Bob Mills. Yeah. No, if they get way too excited from all the fiesta job, excitement, they can take a nap. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe just, you know, relax in a recliner Kick or something their feet like up. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. White puffy clouds out there right now. We are still concerned about rain on our fiesta week. Adam. Oh, absolutely. I think we have two more rounds of thunderstorms headed our way. So hey, get ready for that round one tonight, round two coming tomorrow night. You look at the radar right now. Here's that 20% chance we were talking about. Look at this one shower and uh, no lightning associated with it yet. There could be a few strikes momentarily, but this is up in Stone Oak from Reagan High School, almost stretching to Johnson High School. Uh, Evans Road area 281 Stone Oak Parkway as well, getting clipped by this downpour that we have out there right now. Even Hebner Road and Evidence Road, you see that right along 281. That's what we have currently, but notice how our storm chances spike by 1 a.m. up to 60%. Severe storms possible tonight. We'll time it out for you, future cast, and talk about our next round in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. One year ago, Medina Valley ISD voters turned down a nearly $400 million bond package. Now, that district's trying again uh, at 376 million, slightly smaller proposal with fewer schools. Garrett Berger talked with the superintendent about its second attempt to sell this bond package to voters. Just west of San Antonio, Medina Valley ISD says its school district is growing fast. It expects enrollment to jump more than 80 percent between next school year and 2032. We're one of the fastest growing districts in the state. The district says it needs new schools to cope. But whereas last year's failed bond package included a new elementary school, new middle school, and a new high school, the high school is the only one left in this year's proposal. And there's no football stadium this time. We wanted to put something out there to our community that we felt like would be, uh, or most of our community would be in favor of. Some voters are inclined to pass it. I think the capacity just in all the schools are going to eventually fill up. But with last year's two bond propositions shot down by margins of 18 and 38 percentage points respectively, it's clear not everyone will be on board. Like Hank C, who says he's running as a write-in candidate for the school board. We can't afford this plan, so we need to downsize the plan and, and, and think about the people who live here locally. The bond would come with a property tax increase. So if you have a house with a taxable value of $200,000, you'd end up paying an extra 56 bucks a year. The new high school is by far the biggest chunk of the bond. There's also money for security and traffic improvements, a new agricultural and JROTC facility, and to buy land for future campuses because this will not be the district's last proposal. We know that we're gonna have to come back with something in the near future. Um, the, the positive is, like I just said, the tax rate, it's maxed out. So whatever we do moving forward is not gonna impact our tax rate. Provided this bond passes first. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look at traffic out there during the six o'clock commute. Bit of a problem here at I-37 in Jones. You can see that van there is off to the shoulder there, stalled in some way. It looks like a hero vehicle, a tow truck rather, just arriving there on the scene here at I-37 and Jones. A little bit of a backup, but hopefully not causing too many problems out there on the roads. Still ahead on the news at six, we are going back out to our weather authority Fiesta Metal giveaway going on right now at Bob Mills Furniture. You see people lined up getting their medals. We'll have a live look at the event and the weather for the next few days. Up next. Quick look now at what we're working on for you on the night beat. A family relieved that they found their stolen vehicle it was recovered. 
Then they got hit with hundreds of dollars in fees. Tonight, Dylan Collier investigates why that family, the victims, were stuck with the bill. All right, we got a medal giveaway going on right now. Mia Montgomery, Sarah Spivey out giving away these Weather Authority medals. You guys have a good line there. Yay! We are having such a great time at Bob Mills with our Weather Authority Fiesta Medal giveaway. Now we've given away the medals. People in line are getting the medals. They've already gotten a band. So, but this has been really successful. I mean, look at this crowd. Behind Amazing us. crowd. It's full of dogs. For our friends. What is your are... dog's name? Uh, Cosmo. Cosmo, so cute. Cosmo, you're a star. Cosmo is a superstar. <laughs> Cosmo is excited to get his medal. And speaking of which, if you missed the five o'clock, this is what we're giving away. This is our awesome KSAT Weather Authority medal. So beautiful. It's got the sun, the QR code on the back. So if you're stepping out to any fiesta events, you got your sash on, you're wondering what's the weather going to be like. Just scan that bad boy, and there you go. It's pretty awesome. Again, medals are already given out, but we've had such a great time. We'll see you back here, talk a little bit more about Bob Mills in a bit. All right, thank you, Mia and Sarah. And meanwhile, we're going to talk about the weather right now. And, you know, when you're going out to Nyosa or the Garden Fest tonight, mm -hmm. you want to know what the weather is going to be. And uh, yeah. if your leader hosen is going to, you know, get a little damp. Exactly. That's you don't, very you don't want damp leader hosen. You, no, don't, you, you do don't. not want that, that to sounds happen. sounds bad. Yeah, no. damp hosen's not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> damp hosen. There are some isolated showers across our area right now, but nothing downtown. And I think odds favor it staying dry around downtown for the Fiesta events. Let's get right to the radar and take a look at the limited activity that we have, but noticeable if you're within it, oh, you're noticing it, especially Stone Oak now heading into Timberwood Park. You see this batch that just popped up over the past 30 minutes. Now it's moving into Timberwood Park, uh, still working its way through Stone Oak, but headed into Timberwood Park and the leading edge of it basically right around here east of 281 running Springs Road, Morris Lane, Sotal Lane, uh, Timberwood Park area east of 281. Then we have one right near the radar site, New Braunfels. This is stretching from roughly Bear Creek Estates eastward to the airport, but it's just north of New Braunfels High School, and these are all drifting to the northeast. So that's what we have out there at the moment. That's that 20% chance we were talking about. Still a few more pop-ups possible through the rest of this evening, but the main event is later on tonight. Here's the situation, it's becoming dynamic. Tornado watch box here, just north of us. This includes Waco and actually Waco recently under a tornado warning. Radar indicated, but a wall cloud was spotted and large hail around Waco. They're getting hit pretty hard by this. And then look at these storms stacked up upstream from Waco that'll be headed their way later. Now we are not included within that watch box, but we could have some severe thunderstorms later on tonight. We're waiting for activation along this cold front as it drops southward first into the hill country and then into San Antonio and surrounding areas. Futurecast, it indicates those isolated pop-ups this evening through sunset. And then I think by midnight, 2 a.m., midnight to 2 a.m. is when our rain chances and storm chances really spike around San Antonio. We'll see this broken line that's oriented west to east, but it's going to move southward from the hill country into San Antonio scattered to numerous showers and storms on this broken line and any little segment along this line could very well have severe thunderstorms with straight line gusty winds 60 to 70 miles per hour and even large hail being the primary threats and this is going to linger into the early morning hours tomorrow for the first part of the commute 6 a.m. a few leftover showers around San Antonio but I think the severe threat will have come to an end by then most of the actions closer to the Gulf Coast and along the coastal plain. Then the rest of the day tomorrow actually looking beautiful. It's just tonight and on into early, early tomorrow where we have this bump with the severe storms possible, a little hiccup, a little bump in the road. Thursday during the day, just fine. Thursday night, A-OK. -okay. Friday during the day looking good. Friday night is round two. So round one tonight, round two of storms comes Friday night. And I think the showers and storms will be even more numerous then. And yes, the potential for more severe storms as well. Quick look at our data today. 85 the high temperature and get ready for a few temperature swings coming our way. Dew points at 67. That's going to be changing as well. Behind tonight's cold front, no humidity tomorrow. It returns Friday. 
only to be swept away again for Saturday and the weekend. 63 in the morning tomorrow by noon, sunny and 72, 82 the high temperature evening and afternoon events outdoors. A OK tomorrow. Actually very pleasant with the low humidity. Battle of Flowers Parade. Great. A bit of humidity, but temperatures in the 70s. Mixture of sun and clouds and then Flambeau will actually have temperatures down in the 60s. Look at that high on Saturday, 72 degrees and then Sunday we're right near 80. Hey, my next Fiesta Metal giveaway, my last one tomorrow. Legacy Park. That's on West Houston Street downtown. Wonderful family friendly event going on with as you are pediatric evaluations, long games, balloon art, face painting and 200 medals available. All right, I hope you get your face painted. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> See ya. That'd be awesome. Thanks, All right, uh, Larry joins us now. Larry, let me tell you a story about this duo called Mitch and Myra. OK, <laughs> it sounds like a folk group it does, but they were actually tennis phenoms. Yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty they good were. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Pretty vicious backhand. I heard. Yeah, good serve as well. <laughs> You know, we're talking UIL oh. State Tennis Championship boys action. We got some state champs from Harlan and Bernie High School. Plus, Harlandale High School had two student athletes sign on the line to uh, continue their education and athletic career at the next level coming up. Northside Tennis Center hosted the UIL State Tennis Championship matches this morning, and we had several area athletes going for gold. In the Class 6A boys singles, Harlan senior Lathan Skrobarsik faced El Paso Coronado's Ian Uraga for the title. They traded the first two sets, 6-1, 2-6, and Lathan led 5-4 on the final set. Down 30 love, Lathan won four straight points to break Ian's serve and win the set 6-4 and the match two sets to one. This is the first state champion in Harlan High School history, and it's the second straight season of San Antonio native has won the 6A boys singles title. I knew if I kept going I would, I would I would break them again and even though I lost serve I was like just one point at a time I got this. I mean it feels great I mean to have such a new school and to be able to be the first is definitely special. In the Class 4A boys a doubles title match, Bernie Sam and Jess Gonzalez faced a pair from Kaufman, and the Greyhounds were in complete control from start to finish. Gonzalez brothers win at 6-3, 6-4. Sam has now earned four state medals, while Jess has five, counting their accomplishments in team tennis and soccer. In terms of confidence, I was like, this is our last match no matter what. Let's just go ball out. So we went and just gave it our all. Last year, we didn't, we didn't make the best one, so we made it up this year and it felt amazing. I mean, every, we haven't lost a single match. I mean, we barely lost any preseason. I mean, we pulled it through, so it was amazing. Whatever. It is believed that just five medals are the most by any athlete in Bernie High School history. Take you to Harlandale High School, where on Monday afternoon, two student athletes were honored for signing their national letter of intent. Isabel Olivares will attend the University of Texas for powerlifting, and she plans to major in social work. Check out some of the hardware she's won over the years. Pretty impressive. We asked her what does this mean to her to get a scholarship to continue her education and athletic career in Austin. Oh my God, it means the world to me. I have put so much work into this for the past six years and to be able to say that I made it is such like a big accomplishment for me. And how cool is this for your family in particular, your parents, because you're getting money to go to school. That's awesome. Um, I think they're really proud of me. They have always been my biggest supporters and they've always had my best interest at heart and I'm so grateful to have them in my corner. And what does it say about you? Because you don't have a powerlifting team here, but yet you still get a scholarship to go to one of the biggest universities around. So what does that say about you to, to accomplish that? I think that says that I'm definitely a hard worker and I'm not afraid to put in all the time and effort that it takes to accomplish my dreams. When did UT first notice you? Do you know when that happened? Um, yes, it was the summer going into junior year. So I think I was still a sophomore. I had went to one of their high school clinics and my coach is alumni from UT. Okay. So I guess it was just that little connection that kind of helped a little bit. Up next, Harlandale senior Chanis D.V. Real Bermea, who signed her national letter of intent to attend Our Lady to Lake University, where she'll play volleyball. What a great moment for her and her family. This is like really extremely exciting. This is what I've been working for. This was this has been a goal since forever. So I'm really excited. And what does this moment mean to your family? They're they're I know they're extremely excited and proud. They've helped me every single step of the way. So what are you going to study at Our Lady to Lake? Right now I'm thinking I'm going to study in biology.
Congratulations to every student athlete we just aired right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Great show. I love that show. Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, we are, what, about halfway through? Can you believe it? Fiesta week? Already. It just started. I know. Yeah, well, there's still a lot of stuff going on, <laughs> including medal giveaways. Let's go back to Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery. <laughs> Yes, it has been, I would say, a very successful medal giveaway here at Bob Mills. Don't mind us. We're just kicking our feet up uh, on a accent. very, very comfy couch. I wish y'all could have seen our awesome producer, Alexis, earlier. She was just relaxing. full on comfortable, yeah. but it's been great. It's been great to be in the air conditioning here at Bob Mills. And with us, we have Louie. He's the sales manager here at Bob Mills. Louie, this has been a great experience for our KSAP viewers. Can you tell us why Bob Mills is the best for your furniture needs? Uh, one of our core values here at Bob Mills is everybody's family. And I feel like we really increased our family today. We had a lot of people come in that maybe hadn't been in before and got to see just what we're all about. And uh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm new to San Antonio and it was a great welcoming for me too. <laughs> um, you know, what a great town, what a great event. And you know, it's I'm, I'm looking forward to living here now and being a part of the Bob Mills family. Absolutely, give us a Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. That's very good. <laughs> hey, if you missed out on the medal giveaway today, Adam kasky has got a medal giveaway tomorrow at Legacy Park. The line starts at four, the medals are handed out at six. For now, from Bob Mills, let's toss it back to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Can you find out where Bob Mills gets his suits? I know. I'm kind that of curious good, about that. That's a question we ask a lot here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got quite the word. Hiring minds. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Fiesta, full of amazing events bringing people together from all walks of life and what started as a small carnival for people with disabilities has grown into multiple events and an entire royal court. It's made up of a handful of kids and young adults with special needs like 14-year-old Sophia. My daughter is amazing. My name's Sophia and I'm a special queen. We would prep her, okay, you may not win to be queen, you may be princess, and she said no. I'm not going to be princess, I'm going to be the queen. And I'm like, okay, well, you're going to have to work hard on it. As you can see, Sophie has no fear. She's like, vote for me. And she would hand out her little card. And she's like, vote for me, vote for me. And they would be like, why? And she would say, because I want to help the people in wheelchairs to go to Fiesta. Prior to the accident, as a parent, you never thought about, I never thought about that. We were in a car accident in the year 2019, and Sophia suffered a TBI, traumatic brain injury, and a right brain stroke. We were in the hospital 101 days, and when we left the hospital, they told us she would never eat again, talk again, or walk again. To have a doctor tell you that your daughter would never be the same again was one of the hardest things we had to hear. But we knew deep down inside that my daughter was going to do it. Before this, she was a very bossy little 10-year-old girl. She was a, a people person. She always volunteered to do things with people. Fiesta one, was one of her favorite things to do. She was born and raised on Fiesta. What's your favorite thing about Fiesta? Chicken on a stick. She's like, I, I want to go to Fiesta, Mom. And so we were like, we don't know if we can take her because we don't know if it's going to be accessible or not. So when we started working with Melanie and Lisa, a part of Disability SA. Disability SA is a local nonprofit organization that works to educate, advance, engage, and strengthen the disability community here in San Antonio. All we want to do is make sure that people with disabilities have the same opportunities as everyone else. We need to make sure that these individuals look just as great as any other Fiesta royalty out there. And so reflecting on our coronation this year, we shine. Her cape is all about her personality um, and we got, we got to get her a great dress and she got to pick out her dress and uh, unfortunately with the accident she has a lot of scarring on her face so we had a professional makeup artist come and, and she was like mom I'm beautiful again. I'm like baby you've always been beautiful but she's like no I'm really beautiful and so for her to feel that sense of security again made us feel wonderful.
The court members look amazing and fabulous and look exactly as they should, as if they belong in this community, um, this fiesta community. We want San Antonio to be the place, the destination where everyone know that accessibility is everywhere, inclusion is everywhere, and everybody is special. All hail Queen Sophia. Mm, yes, indeed. Love that story. All right, for more information on the events happening, the rest of Fiesta, scan this QR code on your screen, and that will take you to our KSAT Fiesta homepage. You're going to see events, schedules, parking information, how you can watch all the parades. You can also see how to get tickets to our KSAT Insider after parties and Insider before parties. <laughs> Lots of parties. Plenty Lots of parties. parties. <laughs> KSAT during parties. <laughs> All kinds of insider parties. We'll be right back. Come party. We're out parties. <laughs>